So compound interest, this is more of a realistic type of interest that you'll see in the real world. This is where interest is calculated at regular compounding periods. So instead of just lending money and only charging interest over time, what you do is you lend out your money, you charge interest in for some period, and then you charge interest on that interest, and you charge interest on that interest on that interest, and so on and so on. So this is sort of a smarter way of charging interest for people who are giving out loans because you're making more money by charging interest on the interest. So this is a formula that we're going to use for compound interest. I'm not going to go into detail as to where this comes from in this video, uh, but we're going to break this down a little bit here. So you can see A is the amount of a compound investment. So this is how much money this investment is going to be worth. P is your principal, what you put in. That's your initial investment. I is the interest rate per compounding period. We're going to talk about compounding periods in a moment. And remember, we usually express the interest rate as a decimal. And N is the number of compounding periods. So we're going to talk about compounding periods a little bit as we move into this first example. Buy a new guitar. Gaston borrows $650, which he plans to repay back in five years. He borrows his money from the bank, who's charging 12% per annum, or that's just per year, compounded annually. Okay, so this is a little bit different than our simple interest problem because we're being told that this interest is compounded. If you're ever told that something's compounded, you're dealing with compound interest, not simple interest. So that's a very important distinction that you'll be required to make. So I'm going to start by writing out all of the values off to the left, and then I'll substitute them into the formula. So we know our P. Our P is our principal. That's how much we initially borrowed. Okay, our interest rate is 12% per year. So we could just call that 0.12. Remember, we just express that as a decimal. And our N, that's our compound period. This is happening in five years. Okay, so this is really just a plug and play situation where you've got your formula, you substitute your values. Don't forget that you have to do what's inside the brackets first. Okay, so we're gonna add one plus 0.12, and then we can raise that to the power of five. And you'll see that we end up with $1,145.52. Okay, so that would be the total amount that Gaston must repay after his five-year borrowing period. So how much interest will he have to pay? So this is how much he's going to be repaying in total. So we want to find out how much of this is interest. So you have to think, well, we started borrowing $650. The amount at the end was $1,145.52. So we can just subtract out our principal. And we will determine that we're actually paying $495.52 in interest. So compare this to the amount of interest he would have to pay if the bank charged simple interest. So what I want to do with this example is show you the difference between simple interest and compound interest. And we're going to determine which one is better for Gaston and which one's better for the bank. All right, so what I've done here is just you, I've used the simple interest formula with the same information. I've got my principal, I've got my interest rate, and I've got my time. You can see that the interest charge would be $390. Okay, so obviously $390 is much more desirable than $495 for Gaston, but for the bank, it makes sense to charge compound interest. This value is more because we've been charging interest on the interest. So compound interest is worse for the borrower, but it is better for the bank. All right, second example here, kind of a follow-up. What will the impact on the interest Gaston pays if the interest is compounded semi-annually? So this is gonna be a new concept here. Compounding interest allows us to break up that interest in, in a different way over the course of the year. So this first example deals with semi-annually. Semi means two times in a year. So the interest will be charged twice a year and the number of compounding periods is doubled. So in one year, we're getting two of these interest charges. As a result, the interest rate is divided by two because we're gonna be paying half of the interest rate each time throughout the year. You're gonna see how that affects the interest as a result. I've got the same principle, which I'm gonna just refer back to this slide quickly so you know that we're still working with this, this information here. So we've got the same principle, same interest rate, but remember we're dividing that by two because we're compounding semi-annually. So we get half of this interest rate each time per year. Our compounding periods, we're gonna multiply by two because every year we're, we're gonna get two of these compounds. For in five years and twice per year, we're gonna have 10 as our end value. Okay, so we can substitute everything into our compound interest formula here. We've got our principal, we've got our, our new interest rate, our new compounding periods, and we end up with $1,164.05.
Okay, looking at the interest that we're being charged here, taking that amount and subtracting our principal, we'll end up with $514. So let's just compare that back to the previous situation where it was only being compounded annually. You can see that the interest annually was $495. The interest semi-annually is $514. So we're paying more interest by compounding semi-annually. All right, so another example here, this time we're compounding monthly, same situation, same principal, and same uh, borrowing period with the same interest rate, but we're compounding monthly. So this means that the interest will be charged 12 times a year, so once per month. So the number of compounding periods is multiplied by 12. In one year, we've got 12 times that we're, we're paying this interest, and as a result, the interest rate is divided by 12 as well. All right, so we're gonna just write our givens again. Our principal will be the same. Our interest rate is going to be our 12% divided by 12, and our exponent of n will be five times 12, right? There's 12 months in a year, we're dealing with five years, so we're gonna have 60 as our n value. Okay, and we can, we're working with the same formula. Once we substitute everything in, you can see we get $1,180.85. And we're gonna take our, our amount in total, we're gonna to subtract out our principal, and you can see that we're paying $530 in interest. That shows that compounding monthly results in even more interest than compounding semi-annually or annually. All right, one final example here. This one's kind of neat. We're being asked to solve for a rate of interest as opposed to you know, how much money you're gonna have. So this person starting a small business, takes out a $8,000 loan, which she's gonna repay back in four years. She's told that the amount payable when the loan is due is this much. What rate of interest compounded annually, that's kind of important, compounded annually, is she being charged? So what are we given here? We know that our principal is $8,000. Our interest rate, we are not sure what that is. That's what we're trying to determine. Our N, we're, 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 only, we're only seeing this interest happen once every year. So our N value will just be four, right? We're just multiplying by one because we're compounding annually. Okay, and our final amount, we're, we're actually being told that, is $11,501.24. So this is gonna be a sort of a different problem than the previous one. You can see we're solving for our interest rate. And once we make the substitution into our formula with all of the given information, you can see that somehow we have to unbury that I. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Our goal is to determine what this I is. This is really just sort of a neat little algebra problem. So we're gonna divide both sides by 8,000, right? We're trying to unbury the stuff that's covering up this I. We end up with a situation like this where we divide both sides by 8,000. And then once we've done that, you can see that we have to get rid of this exponent of four. So we do that by taking the fourth root of both sides. You'll see that these, the fourth root and the exponent of four cancel out nicely. We've almost solved for I at this point. So we're gonna take the fourth root of both sides. And when we do that, we'll get this value. We just have to subtract one over the other side and we've solved for our interest rate. Remember that once you've solved for an interest rate, it'll always be written as a decimal. It's good practice to write that as a percentage for communication purposes. So you can see that she's being charged 9.5% interest.